Are you worried about nuclear war? Do you want to know if you will survive? Well, this video explains exactly that, from how many nukes Russia actually owns and how destructive they can be, to later on in the video where I calculate which cities they are most likely to completely erase. <laughs> to start off, most modern day Russian nukes range between 100 and 800 kilotons. For reference, a single kiloton produces the same amount of energy as 1,000 tons of TNT, which looks like this. Right, so how many of these extinction balls does Russia currently own? Well, the numbers are all over the place, but the best estimate comes from a man named Hans. Hans is the director of the Nuclear Information Project with the Federation of American Scientists, so he probably knows what he's talking about. As of early 2022, Hans reckons the Russians have a stockpile of approximately 4,477 nuclear warheads, including 2,555 strategic warheads with about 40% in storage, and 1,912 non-strategic warheads. These non-strategic nukes refer to much smaller land-based missiles with a range of less than 500 kilometers that might be used to attack troops or facilities on the battlefield. In contrast, the strategic warheads generally have a range of 16,000 kilometers meaning they can basically hit anywhere on Earth. On top of all these, an additional 1,500 retired but still largely intact warheads are awaiting dismantlement for a total inventory of 5,977 nuclear warheads. Now that we know roughly how many they have, what can just one strategic warhead do? As I said already, these nukes can come in a range of sizes, but strategic nukes are most commonly between 100 and 800 kilotons. But like, what does that even mean? What could something like that do to a city? Well, if we map it, a 100 kiloton surface blast would create a fireball with a 500 meter radius, almost completely vaporizing anything inside. Within 1.1 kilometers of the blast, heavily built concrete buildings are severely damaged or demolished. Chance of survival within this zone is basically zero. Within 1.82 kilometers of the blast is the radiation zone. Likely fatal within just one month, 15% of survivors will eventually die of cancer as a result of exposure. Everywhere within 3.9 kilometers of the blast is a thermal radiation radius, likely to receive third degree burns causing severe scarring or disablement, often requiring amputation. Within 5.46 kilometers of the blast, glass windows will be shattered and other light damage will cause many injuries. But hold on, there is another factor to consider here. There is a massive difference between whether the bomb explodes upon impact called a surface blast or before it hits the ground called an air blast. Unlike surface blasts, air blasts produce almost no local fallout upon detonation. Instead, air blasts are more effective in producing high levels of overpressure over larger areas and increased yield of thermal radiation. The damage from an air blast can cover an area almost three times larger than a surface blast. However, unlike air blasts, when a nuclear bomb is detonated on the surface, it produces huge amounts of radioactive fallout. Upon explosion, radioactive particles such as fission products, radiated soil and weapon waste are sent into varying levels of the atmosphere. Depending on the direction and power of the wind, radioactive fallout can travel extremely long distances, covering vast areas. Imagine a 800 kiloton surface blast is detonated on a city. With average wind speeds of 15 kilometers per hour, the nuclear fallout of this explosion would create a dangerous radiation zone that covers an area approximately 27,300 square kilometers, roughly the same size as Lake Erie. This zone would have varying degrees of radiation with the majority of the area producing between one and 10 rads per hour with the worst areas producing around 1,000 rads per hour. The average US radiation dose is around 0.62 rads per year, and the maximum exposure limit for nuclear industry employees is just 2 rads per year. A dose of under 100 rad will typically produce no immediate symptoms other than blood changes. A dose of 100 to 200 rad delivered to the entire body in less than a day may cause acute radiation syndrome but it's usually not fatal. Doses of 200 to 1000 rad delivered in a few hours will cause serious illness, and whole body doses of more than 1000 rad are almost always fatal within a few weeks. However, this by no means is the worst levels of radiation. At the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine, the nuclear radiation can range from 10 in nearby areas to 30,000 rad per hour next to the reactor. Now that we have an idea of what we're dealing with here, how long will this fallout last? 
Well, when I was first researching this, I was under the impression that fallout would last for well over 100 years or something, but surprisingly, the initial radiation hazard comes from radioactive fission fragments, with half-lives of seconds to a few months. However, there would be large hotspots that survivors could not enter due to radioactive contamination from long-lived isotopes such as strontium-90 or cesium-137. For the survivors of nuclear war, the lingering radiation hazard could represent a grave threat for as long as one to five years after the attack. Now the big question, where on earth are they likely to hit? Well it depends on a lot of things. First of all, the event of nuclear war as it's commonly described as the destruction of an entire country is incredibly unlikely. What's more likely is the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons on the battlefield to take out armies and military camps, but I digress. If we were in a scenario where full-scale nuclear war was upon us, where is most likely to be nuked? Well I got to digging and quite understandably the first priority for Russia, if they were to try and nuke NATO, is to destroy as much of the nuclear capability of each country as possible. That means command and control centers, nuclear storage depots, and ICBM bases especially are high priority targets. Let's just assume that Russia's intentions is to simply cause as much destruction as possible. To create some idea of what they could do, I compiled a list of every city with over 100,000 residents from every single country in NATO. Unfortunately for me, there was no data on these cities, so I had to use European data and remove all the cities from countries not in NATO. Amazingly, the US and Canada were insanely easy. Their data was just available well, anywhere on the internet. Anyway, it turns out there are 674 of these cities, including all these shown on screen now. So if we have another look at how many strategic warheads Russia currently has, we can clearly see that one of these numbers is bigger than the other. It's estimated that Russia has the capability of using between 1,588 and 4,065 nuclear warheads. This would mean that they could hit every single one of these 674 cities with between two and six nukes each. Yeah, not great. Okay, so let's try going even smaller. For this, I had to do some real digging for the Europe part of NATO. I found this map of Europe detailing the 800 European urban centres with over 50,000 residents. All I had to do was count all the urban centres in countries not in NATO and detract that from the total. Unfortunately, I still had Turkey to contend with, but luckily I stumbled upon a list of all urban centres in Turkey and highlighted all the ones with over 50,000 residents. Once again, the US and Canada were easy with the data readily available as always. Adding both these together, it compiled to a total of 1,685 urban centres with over 50,000 residents across all countries within the NATO alliance. This means that Russia, with a total number of warheads between 1,588 and 4,065, has enough nukes to bomb almost every single one of these cities at least once. However, this assumes that they would bomb, say, New York the same amount of times as Casa Grande in Arizona, with only 50,000 residents, compared to New York's 8.4 million. Even so, this would mean that it's much more likely that if you live in a city with less than 50,000 people, you are way less likely to get nuked, unless you're right next to a major city, of course. The only thing that you would need to worry about is the one to five year nuclear fallout, which would most likely cover almost all of NATO in radioactive material, not to mention the knock-on effects like crops not growing, electricity and power going out, nuclear winter. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Have fun.